What's up my friends, welcome back! It's Wednesday once again, so it's time for another special video, another review. We've already seen the Annette E8 and the Tivo Tarantula, which are some very low cost 3D printers. But we've also seen the Creality CR10, the big one, and the Creality CR10 Mini, and also the Tivo Tornado, which by the way, it's a very good printer. But lately, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube with the title, Best 3D Printer of 2017 or 2018, or Better than the Creality CR10. And that printer is the Anycubic i3 Mega, so I had to check that out. I had to see with my own eyes if this printer is better or at least as good as the Creality CR10. So I contacted Gearbest for this printer. So here I am guys with another review on the Anycubic i3 Mega 3D printer. I really enjoy reviewing 3D printers. And that's because I like to analyze the engineering behind both the mechanical parts but also the electronics the safety features and everything they engineer in order to come with better new models. There is a lot of work in creating new shapes, new components, new firmwares for all these 3D printers. And as you have seen in these last two years, 3D printing machines got a lot better and also the prices a lot lower. So guys, let's see a quick unbox of this 3D printer, the components that we have inside of this case, test it out and give my final opinion about this 3D printer. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back! As always, the 3D printer kit comes in this cardboard box. Inside, we have the printer protected by this white foam and a plastic bag. The package is divided in two, one for the bottom part of the printer and the top part in a separated compartment. They also included a 1 kg of PLA material, which is like 20 bucks of the total price. So that's kind of strange, since you can choose the color and the filament type. I would really prefer getting a cheaper 3D printer without the filament spool, but anyway, this is kind of nice to have. On the top part of the box, we can see the base of the 3D printer. A manual with instruction and color photos and a plastic bag of accessories. The manual will provide you links for all that you need. The technical specification of the printer a full part list of the kit and the instruction on how to assemble and prepare the printer and configure the slicing software and start printing. Next, in the accessories bag, we have the power cord and the USB cable. We also have a spare part for the E3D V5 hot end clone, which is kind of unusual since you normally don't get a spare for the entire part, so this is quite nice. Next, we have a bag of tools that are more than enough for you to mount this printer. The kit also includes a pretty nice and decent print removal that will come in handy anytime. We also have the screws needed to mount the printer and believe it or not, this is all that you need to assemble it, so that should be very fast. You will get a spare part for the end stop in case it breaks a pair of blue latex gloves, so you won't leave any fingerprint marks on the printer, an SD card with all that you need on it, and also an SD card adapter for both SD and micro SD cards, in case that your PC doesn't have a card reader. Finally, we have a transparent acrylic spool holder, that was laser cut with the Anycubic logo, and it is very simple to assemble. That's it guys, this is all that we have for the accessories bag, and this is all that we have in the received box. The bottom and top parts of the frame, the black PLA filament and the accessories. Both the top and the bottom part are 100% pre-assembled and pre-wired, so this printer should be very fast to mount. Here you have a better look on the top part of the printer, which as I said before is 100% pre-assembled. We can see a lead screw on both sides of the printer and the dual Z end stops. In the middle we have the X-axis carriage with the hot end and the cooling fan and one thing that it seemed to me pretty nice is that inside of the hot end block we have a small PCB plug that merges all the components together using just one connector. That it's so nice, since you won't have to make a mess by wiring each component separately and in case that you want to change a damaged part, all you have to do is to remove the part and a short wire that will have its own connector. 
Now let's take a look on the bottom part which has the main case and the Y axis hot bed. And here comes a pretty interesting thing about this i3 Mega. If we take a look at the specification of this glass surface, it should be flat up to a tolerance of 0.2 mm. And it is very very durable. If we make a zoom on it, we can see that we have a glass coated in some sort of fabric, with small porous that will make your 3D print part to stick well in place. I never use this kind of printing surface, but it seems like a pretty nice feature that might be placed on future 3D printers as well. The printing size is 210 by 210 mm and the height of 205. For the Y axis movement as for the X and Z as well, we have smooth rods with linear bearings and I like that since the printing size of this printer is not as big as the Creality and in this case smooth rod seems better for me, resulting into less vibration. Now, inside the main case, the first thing that I've noticed is that there is no external MOSFET, so that might be my first concern. Ok, the bed is not that big, but an external MOSFET is always better in order to prevent the main board to burn out. Anyway, the rest looks perfect. The wires are well organized and zip tied in place. The power supply is inside, so that makes this printer quite safety. Also, we have a direct fan for all the components on the main board, so that should keep them cool. It is quite clear that the board is made for this printer case, since I never seen this one. It also uses the ARM microcontroller and the very strange thing is this huge ass capacitor in the middle. But that must be a good sign. All the wires have decent connectors and insulation. We have the touchscreen module here, the SD input and the connectors for the motors and the end stops, which is the next nice thing about this printer. Instead of wiring each end stop, each motor and the heated element separately, you have these three different sides and also color coded connectors for everything. Since they are different sides, you can put them wrong. Now you have to lift and drag the bottom base of the printer between the top frame and fit it in place so you are able to secure the screws with a set of 4 screws on each side. Now all you have to do is to connect the color coded connectors and the printer is ready. You can now plug it and level the bed and start printing. This was less than 5 minutes to assemble it, so practically this printer is like 100% ready out of the box. The metal frame makes this printer very very stable. At this point the frame is very strong and there is no movement whatsoever, so good job Anycubic for this frame. Since this model of the Anycubic i3 Mega has no capacitive sensor for the auto level, what we have to do first is to home all the axes. Usually you should use digital calipers or just a common ruler and make sure that both Z axes are at the same height. But since this printer has dual Z end stops, the printer will automatically level itself in case of error, so that's a good point. Once we do that, first preheat the bed. Home the Z axis once again and take a piece of paper and make sure that the nozzle is only gently touching the paper, so there is no too much friction. Lift or lower the heated bed with these dumb wheels and by that level the bed for all the corners. Now the printer is ready. Using the touchscreen I preheat PLA and insert the filament, first through this filament sensor and then into the feeder. The filament sensor will detect each time that you run out of filament and pause the print so you could put new filament and keep on printing. That will also come in handy when you're printing multiple colors prints. Now I use Repetier to slice a Benchy file and compare results with my other printers. I've used these settings. On the SD card that you receive, you have the driver and the Cura software in case you want to use those. I save the GCO file on this SD card, put it into the SD card slot and select print on the screen. I select the Benchy file and the printer starts printing. Ok, so I had to stop the first print, since the bed was not hot enough at the beginning and the print didn't stick well to the bed. 
but then I've increased the temperature for the bed and this is the final result for the Benchy example. I've used 0.2mm layer, as in my other examples, and as you can see this might be the best result till now. The layers are perfect and the entire Benchy looks awesome. I've also printed this amazing melted Darth Vader that I've downloaded from Thingiverse. This print turned out great as well. Next I've used some ABS, this white ABS did a good job as well. I can see a bad layer here but in general and for ABS prints this is great for me. I've also printed this vase using spiral printing and as you can see the layer details are perfect, it just looks so good. So now the final conclusion. Is this printer better or at least as good as the other ones that I reviewed? Well come on I've just used it for a few prints and this can be a general opinion. But hey this kit is definitely on my top 3. I like that it's very fast to assemble and all the wires are very nice organized. There are no loose cables or a bunch of connectors and inside of the main case everything looks so good and having the power supply here makes it quite safety. I kind of like the new type of heated bed with this porous surface. I like the filament sensor, the touchscreen is very easy to use, double Z end stops and also double Z axis lid screw. Metal made and very strong frame and best of all perfect prints. I know I just printed a few examples but even with my first prints I've had no errors. This might be my number one 3D printer but I'll have to use it for a few more weeks. By the way, on my webpage I'm making my top of 3D printers and I always update that list, so make sure you check that out and get the links and the coupons for all of the 3D printers. By the way, about the price, this printer is now on Gearbest for 280 euros on a flash sale, so hurry up! Also, the prices can change from one day to another or depending on your country, so you might get it for more or less by the time you see this video. In the description below you have the links and coupons for this and more printers, and also my top favorite 3D printers webpage, so check those out. So guys, in my opinion this is a very good printer. It's not that expensive, ready out of the box, prints beautiful with no errors and high details prints, it is very safety and strong and have some nice features, so I'm more than happy with it, so I can easily recommend it. So this was my review of this printer. I hope that it helped you make an opinion about this kit. I've tried to include in the video all the main aspects and the parts of the printer. If my videos help you and you would like to help my projects, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is down below as always, I would really appreciate that guys. Now I hope that you enjoyed this video, if so don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember if you consider helping my projects check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.